Hey folks, this is part two of setting up your NeoVim for C++ development. In part one, I talked about how to use COC and set it up with your C++ language server to allow for uh, features like jump to definition or error handling in your Vim window. Um, another, a few other prerequisites I use here are FCF for file finding, float term for floating terminal, um, but you can you can use replacements for those, and I'll talk about them as we go along. The source code for everything I talk about here today will be uploaded to tutorial dots, and there will be one for C++ uh, 2 here, basically. Um, okay, I'm going to use some key bindings for comfort, so things like just between split windows, navigating just Control J instead of Control W J, and Control S to save the file. All right. As part of this tutorial, we're going to talk about a nice, nicer file explorer, how we're going to do build integration with CMake, and how we're going to do test integration with Google Test. And that will give us an IDE-like experience for C++. Um, and let's get into it. So the first thing is the file explorer. So FFF is the file explorer I'm using, but you can obviously use Ranger or NNN or any different um, explorer you use. So FFS is pretty minimal, and I don't usually use it for the terminal itself, but we're going to use it for inside Vim as a file explorer, because sometimes we do need a, an actual file explorer and not just the fuzzy file finding um, in FCF. So let's take a look at the structure of our directories here. Actually, let's do that inside Vim. So we installed, we already have float term installed, and I basically added this key binding here right here. So control T will launch a float term terminal with FFF as the as the command as the Linux command. So let me turn on screen key. Um, okay. And you guys can see on your screen now uh, the keys that I'm typing. Alright, so now if I hit control T, you can see that it launches a float term instance with FFF launched. So I can navigate here and I can open it and I can launch it again. You can see how this acts as a replacement for something like nerd tree for us. Let's take a look at the directory here. So we have a source file with main.cpp and all it does is it includes a file header called blah and we basically have a library which includes just Google test which we'll use later on in the tutorial and we have a test directory which includes a test file and all it is is a test um, and an include directory which includes bot.h which just includes a class and a method that returns 42. That's all I'm going to talk about for file finding. Um, most of the time we're going to use um, sorry FCF so um, I can just do like uh, bot.h I can just open it and main.cpp now there are two mains I can open each of these and this works perfectly fine. But sometimes we do need a sort of file navigation, so in those cases I can just hit Control T and navigate through my, my directory. The next part is CMake integration with COC. And by default, let me actually remove this. Um, if you followed the previous video, you'll realize that if I just use the .ccls file as specified, um, it won't actually figure out what the include directories are and how it's it won't actually be able to parse these header files and understand where they're coming from because it doesn't actually coc doesn't really know where it's coming from so what we need to do is we need to integrate our build system with our coc commands and definitions so that um, our runtime vim plugin can understand exactly how and where things are the way to do that is CMake actually has an ability to export what is known as compiled commands. Compiled commands, yeah. And this is basically CMake being very verbose about exactly how it used the, to how it compiled our C++ program. In a regular CMake, if we were using CMake from the terminal, we would use something like um, CMake and then export compiled commands uh, as part of our a command line as part of an environmental variable that we pass in to CMake itself. Um, but we don't have to do that because we're not going to run CMake from the terminal. We are going to use a Vim plugin for this. 
And the Vim plugin we use is vim-cmake in cdelidon. And all it does is it gives us access to these two files, these two commands here that we're interested in, which is uh, cmake generate and oops, cmake build. Right. And the other important thing is this global variable that we set, cmake link compile commands. And whenever we do a cmake build, this will take this will do the same thing and create a compile underscore commands.json which COC can understand and it'll help us with our C++ work. So you can see right now there is no C is compile underscore commands.json and we're opening CMA, source main.cpp. It doesn't really understand it. So if I run, and because I have the uh, key bindings already, I can just do slash CG to generate and slash CB to build. And now because of that global variable that we set, you can see that a compiler underscore commands.json was generated. And this time, if we open up main.cpp again, you'll see that it's actually able to fully understand the fact that this is valid code. And we can actually even do gd to jump to definition, control a to go back. So this is happening across files and across folders and our COC of understanding how our C++ program is being built and linked. There are other commands on this Vim CMake GitHub page around installing, opening the CMake console window, um, but I mostly just use the generate and build, and obviously clean. I guess I should use that as well. And then uh, I like to run the, I like to run it from my own floating terminal, um, so I can do. In this case, it actually puts it inside a debug, debug, and then hello, and it just does foo forty two. That's all I'm going to talk about about CMake integration for now. Um, I do want to do an actual video on CMake itself to explore how to use CMake in a more modern setting, but I won't be doing that here. Um, this is mostly focused on if you're assuming that you have a CMake setup already, how do you improve it inside Vim itself? So the final thing I'm going to talk about is running Google tests inside Vim. So as part of our CMake build, we already have assuming in CMake, you can actually integrate testing. So um, let's see. In our test directory, we also have a CMake test, which uses Google test. And basically, once we um, slash CB it, it creates a hello underscore test command here, which is going to run our Google test. So if I do dot slash debug um, TST hello underscore test, this is running our Google test command. And we want to run this inside Vim. And the, ma the main useful method here that I, I want to mention here is this thing called test run underscore cursor, because otherwise it's not too different to run it in the terminal um, versus a um, inside Vim. But this is where the usefulness really comes in, because oftentimes you'll be working on a test and you'll need to run the test under the, the cursor. And this will help us do that. And to do that, we add this um, plugin called m g test and we the second part of it is it needs to know the g test command and this is this is done on like a case by case basis i guess um, i haven't found a nicer way to do this but we can do g test cmd um, in that case it's debug tst hello underscore test okay so now it understands where the test command is and now i can open up a test file and i can run slash gt and it'll run the test underscore under this and if i want to change this i will change it i'll build it again and it'll build again and i can run the test again and this time the test succeeds and if we have multiple tests under the same test binary this is where we want to make sure that our command just runs the single test that we're interested in so we're on this test with our cursor and we can build it again and we can run slash gt and you can see that it ran only test two test one if it ran would have failed i'm going to cut this video short here i might do a part three here which includes most of the focus on debugging with gdb um, but that that starts to veer out of the the C vim territory and more into the c plus plus territory uh, and be prepared i have a bunch of c plus plus videos coming soon as well thank you guys for watching please like and subscribe and finally, um, this entire file will be linked under the video as well. Thank you, guys.